All right, so my name is Ryan Goldie. I'm a SVP Head of Payments at Fireblocks. And I'm going to talk to you today about, I'm going to walk a bit. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, something that's not even here on the slides, because I had to send the slides before. And I actually wanted to do a live demo, but then you can't do a demo. So I'm going to have an open conversation with you. I do have slides, don't worry. I'm going to have an open conversation with you about Fireblocks, about product market fit, about how we were able to reach from three people in 2018 to 650 in 2023. And I'd like to also have you asking some questions throughout that session, right? So I will ask for the amazing clicker. Thank you. So nice they make it so easy with green and red, right? Um, all right, so how many here know Fireblocks? Maybe show of hands. Okay, you know Fireblocks, that's easy. Great, so we'll, we'll do the first part really quickly, right? So Fireblocks, if you haven't met us before, is probably one of the largest providers of, I wanna say, software for keeping your digital assets safe, for creating uh, custodian applications, banking applications, payment applications, probably everything you wanna create on digital assets. And where we are today is we're with 1,900 clients, uh, which, is, which is tough, we'll talk about that, having, a lot, having clients. Uh, Four trillion transactions already, uh, over 200 million wallets created, I think that's over 400 now, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and we got $1 billion in funding, which is very helpful as well, we'll talk about that as well. Um, I do have some cash to give out at the end of this speech, right? So, so stay tuned to the end of it. Uh, and there's about 654 employees, by the way. Right, and we started, we started here in Tel Aviv. You've never been to Tel Aviv, best city in the world. Uh, we started here in Tel Aviv, three co-founders. I wasn't one of them. I'm just gonna take credit for all of that, but I'm, I wasn't one of them. And we slowly grew to, you know, having offices in a lot of places and working with these amazing companies, including Stellar, uh, obviously, as, as you said, one of probably the best partners we have in this ecosystem. So, so what, what do we do? And I'll come back to this in a bit. We started really just with, with this, right? Just with custody and trading in 2018. And I want, to tell you, I want to tell you that story, okay? So let's start with me personally. As I said, my name is Goldie. Uh, I'm almost 40 years old. I have two kids. And I am what you call, what people call a serial entrepreneur, what I call a failed entrepreneur, right? Because if you're a very good entrepreneur, you probably have one startup, right? Mark Zuckerberg, he doesn't have a lot of startups. He has Facebook, he's a billionaire, that's great. Uh, but for me, when I left the, in, in Israel, you spent several years in the military, I spent five years. After that, I had five uh, miserable failures. Uh, when I talk to VCs, obviously I say, I had five great learning experiences, right? But no, it was miserable failures in startups. Then I was very fortunate to have uh, great two co-founders. Uh, we took a company public in London around advertising. I loved financial markets. We went into, I went into finance even more, did algo trading on normal exchanges, not DEXs, not, not crypto at all. Uh, and that got acquired. And then I started, in 2017, I got into crypto. And when I got into crypto, one of the first people who came up to me was Michael Shaulov, the CEO of, of Fireblocks. And he told me, and he's my friend for 20 years by that time, right? We met at the army together. And he told me, Goldie, I heard you got into crypto. I used to value you as a person. I didn't know you were a scammer, uh, which it's okay. I didn't take offense back then because 2017, if you remember that, if you were in crypto in 2017 and you weren't making money, you know, you, you, had, you had issues in your head probably because it was, it was, it was, it was pretty easy back then. Uh, everything was going up and to the right. And, and by the end of 2017, obviously, Crypto Winter came in. But at the, end of, at the beginning of 2018, Michael, the CEO of Fireblox, came to me and said, this was almost a year later, he said, OK, I think I got it. Now, why did he say, I think I got it? So this is the story about how Fireblox got to be here. In 2018, it, I don't know if you know this, a lot of people really loved crypto. Uh, also a lot of nations. The, the one who really loved crypto was North Korea. So North Korea decided that about 15 to 25% of their GDP would be based on crypto hacks, 
Uh, and by 2018, they've hacked over 17 billion uh, of, of accounts, not, sorry, sorry, not accounts, $17 billion that they got into the country, which is, you know, it's better than $1 billion funding, right? Um, and Michael was working at Checkpoint, and he was, it's a security company, and he was called to look at some North Korean exchanges, sorry, about, uh, look at South Korean exchanges and figure out who were behind these hacks. And as he, you know, got into understanding blockchain, the security mechanisms and all that, he basically realized there's a real issue here, that crypto is not being, is not secured enough. Uh, there, there's, there's a gap in the market. Now, I'm taking you back to 2018 now. Who are, who's the leader in 2018 in uh, wallet security uh, and infrastructure? Do you remember? Hey, Tori. You remember who's the leader in 2018? One of you probably remembers. It starts with Bit, ends with Go. Yes, BitGo. All right, very engaged crowd. Can you say BitGo once? All right, thank you. I just wanna, I just wanna get you rolling. Okay, it's a long day. So anyway, BitGo was the leader back then. Fireblocks was just starting, and I, I was there with Michael and the other two co-founders, Idan and Pavel, and, and we were talking about okay, what's missing here, really? Uh, how are we, how are we getting these clients? Right, that was what we were thinking. Uh, and basically, the, the idea was, let's, let's create another very secured wallet. We come from cyber, we spent five years protecting our government or hacking other governments according to a foreign press. I will never confirm this. Uh, ben, I think I told you this, so I have to kill you at the end of the lecture. But, uh, so, and, and we realized, you know what? It's, it's, we don't need to create a, a new secured wallet. We actually went out and talked to Galaxy. We talked to Genesis. We talked to GSR, Cumberland, the largest market makers, OTC desks out there. And what we realized is that they're not missing a, a security. They're, they have a gap in operations because when they move funds, it takes them a shit lot of time and they do it with a lot of room for error. And that is where security uh, is probably at its weakest point. And when we talked to them, we realized what they really need is a software for a better operationally secure their wallets, but also move money in, 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 you know, in seconds without having to call uh, a third party and having them identified with a video call or something. I'm not saying, by the way, BitGo is not a good actor. BitGo is great. We love BitGo. We love everyone. Is there someone from Copper here? We also love you. I saw them downstairs. Anyway, so, uh, and we, we got to understand this is what we want to build. So we started with, we start with these folks. And I just want to remind you, again, this was 2018. It was crypto winter. You remember crypto winter, 2018. It wasn't, wasn't a good time. Uh, and we started basically uh, with the OTC desk. That was our strategy. While other companies, by the way, thought, you know, the best thing to do is actually go after the exchanges, go after the I don't know, the, the projects, the ICOs, you remember those in 2018, right? You would go to the restroom and someone would be next to you and say, hey, you wanna put 10 ETH on my project? Sure, why not, what's your code? So that was 2018. And basically, we started with the OTC desk and we were very lucky to find product market fit with those folks in the beginning. Uh, and I think what, what happened is that we got to sign something like 10 design partners Right, this was like very early 18. When we already built the product five months later, you know what happened? 80% of our design partners died because of Crypto Winter. But that's okay, that's Crypto Winter. There's a, there's, a, there's a sentence that we have in all of our slideshows, perseverance, secret of all triumphs. Fine, we, we persevere, we continue forward. Uh, and, and we continued working with the, the ones who survived and we found our, our footing in 2018 and we found that if we deliver a platform that has uh, great operational efficiency and a lot of security in the back end, that will actually capture uh, a lot of the market. And instead of trying to build, and I'm talking here to the builders in you, instead of trying to build a, gener a generic product in a way that will you know, take all of the use cases together and will solve everything, we actually decided we'll, we'll, we'll go case by case. We started with Genesis, we went to Galaxy, we went, 
We solve them case by case. And when you actually develop your company or your software solution, your product, case by case, if you're doing it you know, in a very methodological way, you'll actually get to a generic solution eventually. Because you know, take, all, take like 15 use cases, eventually that's like 80% of all use cases probably. Right? Uh, Rob, do you agree? Thank you. Uh, okay, so, and then it was 2018, we, we started, we, we got some, some momentum rolling, uh, and we started filling that side of the house. And then in, in 2019, we continued, we only got to 70 clients in 2019, okay? But then 2020 came, and this is where I'm gonna use the sentence that's a cliche by now. Bear market is a time to build, bull market is a time to grow, right? And we really put a lot of effort in our tech in 2018, 2019. So when 2020 came, right, we were, we, were, we were there and we were ready. And when the bull market of 2020 came in, uh, we saw not just the OTC desks and the liquidity providers bringing a ton of new partners and telling every one of them, if you want to work with us, you got to be on the Fireblocks network. You got to be connected to that security layer. Uh, not only that, but we saw a whole lot of other new participants coming in, right? So that was 2020, and, and we were very lucky to be at that point, I want to say, ready. Uh, but we also had a different mindset than other companies. We came from, some of us came from enterprise software. So we knew that if we want to build the company uh, in the right way, we need to have ahead of time probably the right sales cycles of BDRs, of, uh, of sales, of onboarding managers, of you know, all that cycle. Well, other startups who were new, if you remember a startup called Curve, for example, there were another wallet out there. They eventually got acquired by PayPal for 300 million. By the way, that was huge for them. And they, they are now behind the PYUSD token, right? Which is awesome. So we, uh, we, we put a lot of effort in being prepared for that growth and being prepared for that enterprise software growth as well. And, from 2020, January, to the end of 2022, we got from 70 clients to 1,500 clients, and from 90 employees to 300 employees. Now, obviously, we did a lot of mistakes in that growth, right? I wanna share some of those mistakes with you right here. Um, and, 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 and you're probably thinking, those who joined, he's not removing any complexity from digital assets. No, you're right, we're just talking about Fireblocks and PMF and and how the world actually works. And some of the mistakes we've done growing to this were uh, we didn't hire, right? It was, if you remember the bull market of 20, 2020 and 2021, uh, we didn't hire the right way. We really wanted to grow. We hired a lot of people without the right process. Uh, we didn't look at, at I wanna say, at our product uh, all the time the right way. Sometimes we were too, mar too much customer led and didn't zoom out for a bit, but we were very lucky that in 2021, those folks, 2020, 2021, those folks came in and slowly we created more, we solved more use cases. We started solving Web3, we started solving uh, payments, we started solving wallets. And there's a slide here. This is where I usually say, hey, we're here, right? We're only beginning. Most of what we're doing right now in the world is crypto. We really believe payments, Web3 and securities are gonna be huge. And this is sort of the journey we went through. This is what I was talking about so far. Started here, first client around here, COVID hit, also bull market. Uh, and then by the end of 2022, as I said, we were already, end of 2021 actually, we were already with 1,500 clients, 300 and something employees. Uh, and we decided, okay, let's do our first acquisition and, and bet on payments as well. Now this is another interesting story. And I don't have a lot of time. Aditi, how much time do I have? Seven minutes, that's fine. Uh, this is another story about how a company that's already growing and wants to do more things really can't. You know how sometimes you look at companies and you're saying, oh, maybe Google will do it, Microsoft will do it, whatever will do it, we shouldn't spend the effort of, of developing something? Well, even we, we found out that even at 300 people, if we want to get into payments, then we started a team in-house, we wanted them to do it, they didn't have the right resources, we didn't have the right time, they were focused on what the market is currently doing, we couldn't make them available to do payments. So we decided, you know what, we're going to buy a payments company. That was a big lesson for us. We, by the way, we just did the same with tokenization. We're betting big on tokenization over the last year. And after realizing that 
you know, we think that tokenized securities is going to be the future and tokenization of everything from stable coins to, uh, you know, uh, stocks to everything else. And we really tried doing this on our own for the past year. We had some success, but we decided, okay, you know what? It's time for another M&A for us. So there's, for us, there's a lot of lessons here. Uh, I do want to leave a few seconds for, <laughs> for questions. So I'll just say today, after five years, uh, we're not just doing custody and trading. We're working with top tier banks for tokenization. We've done stable coins and CBDCs. GMO is here, uh, by the way, as well. Uh, one of our partners this. We've issued stable coin for three of the four banks in Australia, Central Bank of Brazil, uh, uh, several banks unnamed right now in Europe, as well as in the US. In payments, we've got into enabling flows for companies like Visa, WorldPay, Checkout, uh, and uh, NFT and Web3 companies, obviously that is now the biggest thing. I don't know if Fortress should be here, but anyway, so we got to be in a lot of places. The way we're doing this is we don't have a five-year plan. I don't know if you've read N NVIDIA's uh, CEO latest post. He doesn't even have a one-year plan. We do have a one-year plan because we're still, <laughs> we still run on VC uh, with VCs, right? So we do need to have plans. But we really think of the market as something that we need to look at every three months. Our strategy leaders need to look at it, understand where really is it going, especially in our market that's constantly changing, and we want to adapt to that. So we work with something that's called a focus document for the next two quarters, and that is really what guides us as a company. Even though we're 600 people, even though it's 1,900 clients, this is how we operate today. So this is how we got to be here. Uh, my message to you really is that if you're building and if you're a company you're looking for product market fit don't think you need to start from solving all of the problem solve one use case then solve the second then the third then the fourth and slowly you'll you'll have that amazing solution um, i wanted to zoom in on payments because i wanted to tell you that we really believe that Payments are gonna be huge and there are gonna be some amazing enabling events over the last next few years like tokenization of more currencies and stable coins and on-chain effects and all that. But I'm not gonna do it because we are running out of time. And I want you to have time to ask questions. So I'm gonna say thank you for now. And as, are there any questions? If you don't ask, I'm gonna randomly pick a person. Yes. Hey there. Um, I'm just wondering how many smart contract developers do you have out of the 600 and how has that number changed over the years? Very good question. Until we got into tokenization, we really didn't have one. Now I want to say we have probably like 10 to 15, I think. Uh, and they're very hard to come through. So if any one of you is developing smart contracts, let me know. Anyone else? Any other question? Okay. What are you building? Uh, smart deploy. I'll talk about it later. You're going to talk about it later? You don't want to talk about it now? No, no, it's okay. All right, I'm going to come to your lecture later. So I'll, I'll just continue with this slide for a minute. This is how we see this, the future. Okay, this is what we believe is going to unfold over the next several months to several years with, you know, give and take probably what I said before. We really think there's a big technology shift right now. We really think that on-chain identity is gonna be huge. We think that this comes hand in hand with tokenization of everything. We think that if a, a client like Revolut that runs on Fireblocks would wanna consume tokenized stocks or, or tokenized ETFs or whatnot, there needs to be an identity component to that. We're focusing on that a lot right now. Account abstraction is something that sort of came behind our backs in a way, I think the entire industry, and now we really were thinking of how MPC and account abstractions live hand in hand together. That's, that's something that we're, we're putting a lot of efforts on. And, and L2s, I think they're coming in fast. Not to say that Stellar is not an amazing blockchain, and we probably are the biggest advocates of Stellar, I think, in the world right now, with especially around payments, but L2s are interesting. And there's a lot of talk especially internally in the company, should we be making a lot of efforts working with them and putting them into the right path uh, of, of, you know, of technology? And, and again, this is our strategic foundations. We really, unfortunately, because we're so big, we need to look at, at regulations. We need to make sure that everyone on our network is working together so someone will, can go to GMO and take their stable coin through this, the Fireblocks network. Um, and we're focusing a lot of developer experience 
because I think we've been working a lot with enterprises, and I think the next wave is gonna be a lot around developers from enterprises, actually, right? Not just your garage developers. And I know my time is up, Aditi, so unless there's any other questions from anyone in the audience, I want to wish you an amazing day. And if you want to learn more about how Fireblocks is actually removing complexities and you want to see demos, come talk to me later. Have an amazing day, everyone. Thank you. Woo!